Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The design and engineering of any complex machine requires special skills, tools, and experience. It also requires time and dedication to turn a blueprint into a reality. And one can imagine the meticulous planning in designing and constructing a vessel that operates about 1,500 feet below the sea surface. In today's feature, we will see what it takes to design and construct a submarine and how the submariners navigate around this cramped steel tube vessel. Of all naval combatants, a submarine presents the greatest design challenge. A comparative study is conducted between the vessel's future missions and threats and the suitable technologies available to assist in fulfilling those objectives. Simultaneously, the structures, acoustics, hydrodynamics, and combat system performance of the submarine also undergo detailed analysis. Lastly, a contractor transforms the contract drawings and ship specifications of the contract design phase into the documents and drawings necessary to construct and test the submarine. With all these phases of developing a submarine in place, submarines can take more than a decade to roll out and enter service. Physical construction time depends upon man hours available and the capability of the yards building them. The hulls, ballast tanks, outer structure, and propulsion systems are components that are built and installed before the launch. Once launched, the internal equipment is then brought and installed into the submarine. Like other vehicles of this scale, the submarine is subject to numerous tests and certification before it is deemed operational. Historically, conventional submarines used diesel engines that required air for moving on the water's surface and battery-powered electric motors for moving beneath it. But today's modern age submarines have vastly improved the concept of these underwater vessels. Though diesel-powered submarines are still dominant for most naval forces today, six nations have another breed of submarines in their arsenal, the nuclear-powered submarine. As early as 1939, the U.S. Navy has played around with the idea of nuclear-powered submarines, and it came to fruition in 1955 when the USS Nautilus, the world's first operational nuclear-powered submarine, began its voyage. This became the impetus to the development of nuclear-powered submarines in other powerful nations of the world, including China, India, the UK, France, and Russia. The Virginia class, or SSN-774, is a class of nuclear-powered cruise missile fast attack submarines currently in service in the United States Navy. With a displacement area of 7,900 tons, the submarines of this class run on an S-9G nuclear reactor, delivering 40,000 shaft horsepower. Its nuclear core life is estimated at around 33 years. 
The Virginia class is the first to utilize phototonic sensors instead of a traditional periscope. In contrast to a typical bladed propeller, these submarines use pump jet propulsors, which significantly reduce the risks of cavitation and allow quieter operation. And in the elusive world of submarines, stealth is key. These submarines are also equipped with improved sonar systems, rescue equipment, and high-energy laser weapons as compared to diesel-electric submarines. But even with the best of technology and equipment, the life of submariners is anything but normal. Once fully submerged, life takes on an 18-hour schedule, divided into three six-hour segments for sleeping, keeping watch, and a little bit of personal time to do what little they can in the cramped space. The artificial 18-hour schedule and the lack of natural light make keeping track of time difficult. Sleep is a luxury for submariners, and due to the limited space, one bed is often shared with one of a few other crew members. Known as hot racking, the crew just sleeps on any unoccupied bunks when the other is on duty. Minimal and congested bathrooms make the sanitation facilities of a submarine austere. It's only a matter of a few weeks for fresh food to perish on board. Under concentrated conditions, time is often passed in the mess halls talking or resting to provide relaxation for sailors and foster camaraderie. But these carefully chosen and trained submariners are very adaptable, working around the limited space limitation and making it worthwhile. A submarine operates at the margins of safety, hence, as a precautionary measure, the crew is trained extensively to react to any emergency on board. The training schools often train the submariners with two methods to escape the submarine, through the conning tower and the torpedo tubes. In either of the escape methods, the trainees are required to wear a special suit, such as the IDA-59 or the submarine escape immersion equipment. In the conning tower, the tower is filled with water and a float is released from below the tower to reach the tower's surface. After which, the trainee is ordered to go into the tower to freely ascend upwards, holding the rope of the float. In the case of torpedo tubes, the trainee is required to crawl through the torpedo tubes to find their way out of the submarine simulation. The weight of the suit and equipment makes this escape a harrowing endeavor, so one can only pray they never have to go through this ordeal in a real situation. The operating environment and characteristics of a submarine are unique, and it imposes special demands on designers, engineers, and the submariners themselves. The submariners travel through places on this Earth where even the sun cannot cast its light. A submariner's life story is anything but ordinary, thanks to this amazing and exceptionally designed vessel.
that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.